Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about what makes a perfect campground and how do you find it? It's an interesting discussion that I thought might be kind of fun to dig into in this, this video. The perfect campground for everybody is different, but there are probably some things that are the same for everyone. So what do all these campgrounds have in common? It's going to be location. It's going to be price. It's going to be the amenities that that campground offers. It's going to be the cleanliness of that campground. If you know any one of these are off no matter what the price range on the campground is you're not going to want to stay there i mean you want you're looking for that balance between all of those and it depends on what your outlook is for that particular stay so maybe you pick a particular campground because of its location is it a destination campground is it some place that you're going to because of the campground or is it some place you're going to because of where that campground is and other things that you're going to do you know, an example of something like that would be, you know, I'm going to go to Walt Disney World and I'm going to stay in Fort Wilderness. Well, that makes Fort Wilderness a destination campground because that's where you're going and it's taking you into Walt Disney World. So let's talk about the amenities that a campground has. Um, an example of where you might pick, you know, one campground or another is because, you know, they offer more amenities more to do at the campground and in sense making that campground more of a destination for you. We've stayed at a campground in Myrtle Beach called Pirate Land and we've done a review of that I'll link that up here. And in that campground they offer a lot of amenities. They offer a very nice laundry area, they offer a store, a snack bar, um, they're on right on the ocean so you have you know, real easy beach access. They offer a lot of things to do for family including a large swimming pool, a kids play area, uh, you know, kids pool play area, and a lazy river. So there are a lot of things to do at that campground. The cost of that campground to stay there is a little bit more than, say, Huntington Beach State Park, which is just down the road a bit. Now that campground does offer the same level of hookups. You can get full hookups with water, electric, and sewer, but you and you still have access to the beach but you don't have those other amenities built into the campground. So it, your stay there would be different and maybe that's you know something that you want um, and you do that for a lower cost or you stay at you know more of a resort type of campground like Pirateland and take advantage of those amenities and maybe you don't need to go other places to do other things. How do you find that perfect campground? You know, so sometimes you search online and you're going to use some different tools. One of the ones that I like is campgroundreviews.net because people write in reviews and you can see a rating of how people people think of that particular campground. And so you can see that, you know, a, a nice campground might have an eight and above. And that might be a place that you want to stay. Um, one of the campgrounds that we stayed at that had a really high rating that we found because of that was the Starlight Campground in uh, Pennsylvania near Lancaster Pennsylvania that was a that was a really pleasant surprise we'd never been there before and we totally selected it based off of the rules on campgroundreviews.com and it ended up being an, a great place to stay um, it had a, a lot of nice amenities a great view um, just a lot of nice little things that about it and I probably never would have found that campground without using that app so that's another way that you can find that perfect campground. There's other things to consider too. A lot of times you might look for a state park because you know state parks offer a certain level of amenities. Uh, um, state parks offer, you know, usually a little bit more privacy in their campsites. They may be a slightly farther apart than a private campground. And a lot of times the loops are a little bit more isolated from the neighboring campgrounds. So you're not backed up to your neighbors or right on top of your neighbors. But you also tend to lose some things. A lot of times the state park campgrounds 
don't have the full hookups or they do but it's not the full campground it's only partial of it so that might affect um, your choice of that perfect campground you know you could go to a state park and because you only got electric you're limited to the number of days that you can stay there because you're you're limited to your capacity of your tanks now you can extend that by using the bathhouse and the showers there and such and use less water and you know less filling of your tanks or you, you can just basically say I can camp for five days on my tank levels and that's fine for the trip that we want to do. Um, maybe you know the state park isn't what you want but you want to you don't know what the campground is so you pick a KOA for example because you know a KOA is a franchise ca campground and they're all going to be to a certain level so you're going to expect a certain amount from each KOA but even there you have to be careful because you can get into uh, different levels of KOA. KOA has their resorts, their holiday, um, you know, and then they have their standard campgrounds and the requirements to meet these different things are different for each campground. Um, we've stayed at some KOAs that were resorts that had a lot of amenities for families, a lot of things going on, pool, um, a lot of, you know, arcade areas, things like that that, you know, you can do while you're at that campground. Um, and then there's other KOAs that we've stayed at. They were just basic. It had a pool, but it really was more of a basic campground. It didn't have all the amenities in, built into it yet. So you have to be careful about that too. So this is our campsite here at the KOA at St. Augustine Beach. And that we're at the end of a row, so we didn't have another neighbor on our window side or our patio side of the um, RV. So it gave us a little bit of more room and a little more feel open, but it is a very small site and I barely had room to park the truck um, on the site. Probably could have moved the trailer maybe a little bit more forward or something, but then that would put me farther away from the hookups. So one thing you may want to consider when you're looking at a campground or staying at a campground is when you get to it, it may not meet the impression that the website or the information that you got was and so you want to keep in mind that when you're making your reservations you know am I locked into this campground what if I get there and I don't want to stay the full length of my reservation am I stuck there and you know from that perspective you want to make sure that you know you can change your reservation or you can change the amount of days that you stay or that you you know you haven't paid for the full week or whatever length of time that you want to stay there so that you can move on uh, we've done that where we went to a campground in Texas that when we got to it, it just didn't look as nice as it did in the pictures we saw online. And we decided that we wanted to try, we wanted to go someplace else because we just happened to um, spend the, the previous night at a local state park that we really liked. And so the comparison between the two didn't make it. So we had originally booked this campground for two weeks. When we went in to, you know, sign, you know, register, we told them we changed our mind that we were only going to stay there a week um, because that fitted, you know, the shortest amount of time that we could get, we could uh, readjust our schedule because we did have some commitments that staying at that campground worked for. So we haven't talked much about the cost of the campground and the cleanliness of the campground. And both of these measurements in the criteria are very subjective. You know, what is what is a clean campground to me or what am I willing to pay for a campground may be different to you. And so for an example, um, maybe you put a budget or maybe your budget for camping is $35 a night. And, and you're looking at campgrounds that meet that criteria. And so the perfect campground to you, you know, is a nice, spacious campground that's quiet, clean, you know, has some minimal amenities, but maybe your amenities are the quiet and clean. And, you know, it's going to cost you $35 or less per night. And that's the perfect campground. And maybe somebody else wants to have that campground with a lot more amenities, and those amenities are cost more. And some of those amenities might be you know, being at Walt Disney World. And so 
you're willing to spend a hundred dollars a night plus to stay at Fort Wilderness because it brings you those additional amenities and you have additional value to those men amenities. You know, being able to stay at, at Fort Wilderness, you know, gets you into the Disney transportation. So you don't have to drive your car anywhere. You can jump on one of the Disney buses or one of the Disney transportation, the monorail or whatever, and go anywhere inside that complex and not have to worry about parking or anything like that. And there's a value to that. And so you could look at that and say, if I add that to what I'm paying for camping, I'm, I can justify staying here. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to stay here for a month because that could be quite expensive. You know, $3,000 for camping is quite a bit of money, but you get the idea um, and how that works. So those are a couple more things to think about when you're, you know, balancing out the perfect campground. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't done already, please subscribe to our channel and ring that notification bell so that you get notified when we post new videos. We try to post new videos every week. And until the next time, we will see you down the road. Goodbye, everybody. One more thing. If you're wondering where this campsite is, it's a secret, but I'm going to share it with you because it's a very unique campground. It's got one site and it's our front yard. There's our house right there. So we're camping in our front yard for this video.